she was literally scared to death. I think that we do need to make some sort of announcement that it is with a heavy heart. Ken has been pregnant. That's why we canceled the show. Oh, blow me. He's given birth. It's a bouncing baby goat. A documentary about it. You know, there was some chance that you might have gotten three hour like a man instead of the lucky one, but not anymore. What fucking difference does it make? Well, it's the well actually the lucky one is shorter. Yeah. Well, sure. nonetheless, no. But I mean I think people do need to be warned of the fact that we are coming back with grave misgivings and gloomy foreboding. If they're listening to this, I would think they would know. Right. They might just think it's an old one they dug up. Or that we dug up. That. I mean, you never know. Nobody's you never know. Gonna... Some, someone somewhere is probably collecting these damn things. His name's Jeremy. Yeah, well, I that's mean, true. He knows that we're coming back. So That's true, because he made a lovely picture for us. Okay, well, good. That's You'll good enjoy it. Steve actually is the one who got the worst of it. I love that. Are you kidding me? As the wolf man? It's no, brilliant. you're not the wolf man. You're a caveman. Uh, even better. <laughs> I don't... You mean they doctored that? Yeah, yeah really, they did. Yeah. Really, it didn't take much. No, uh, I, was, I was surprised at how flattering that actually <laughs> came across. You, however, look very natty. Wearing John so. Carradine's hat. I would hope so. Anyway, you know, people will know what we're talking about when they see this before they see... We haven't even said who this is yet. The people have no idea. Let's assume that people don't know who, the, who, who you people are. Anyway, if they don't know, we were going to have a a guest star today. What? Uh, who? Uh, Hump the Wonder Camel, but he can't make it. I'm glad I asked. Yes, I have no so idea how glad I am. I asked that. Well, you see, he's in jail, actually, because he was he, he's a one humped camel, and he was taught, caught having relations with a two humped camel. And the prophet forbids. Trust me. Coming to you from the car- yet, actually. I don't know. I don't have think we we're gonna get to say the goddamn intro. <laughs> Coming to you from the Carolina Cinemas in Asheville, North Carolina. It's Elitist Bastards Go to the Movies with Ken Hankey. Hello. And Justin Souther. Hi. And so for those of you who have um, listened to this podcast before, um, we stopped doing it a couple of, like what, six months ago, something like that. Oh, Steve something like that. Killed yeah. it off. Yeah, Steve killed it off. He took it down to the river, put it in a sack, and drowned it with Hump the Wonder Camel. And now I'm bringing it back. Yes, from the dead. He is bringing it back from the dead, and us with it. Nobody asked for it. I know. But no, yes. Nobody nobody dragged us here, mind you. because no one demanded it. Yeah. Elitist bastards return. But no one could stop it. Steve thinks he's there's a gold mine buried somewhere in here. Probably. So. Oh man, I oh, mean, I can smell it. What is Elitist bastards? Let's give, give this. Because we're starting over podcast. We're yeah, starting. We're, we're starting the whole like structure over. So. Well, well, the whole idea, basically, mm-hmm. you must understand. This is this is this is sort of a a, a, a growing organic disease, what like a, a lot cancer. Of bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> like um, a kudzu plant. Something Oil. like that. Very much like a more like kudzu. I think kudzu mm-hmm. is, is probably a um, kudzu doesn't stop growing. How do you know we will? Well, <laughs> past. Past experience, experience, but past experience could be wrong. In any case, the whole point of this is that we are movie critics and that we are elitists and that we are bastards and that our taste is better than yours and therefore you should listen to us. Isn't that about it? Yeah, good enough. Okay. And to clarify, you guys are, are those things. I just edit you. That's all I really do. Well, I haven't seen any of the movies you're going to talk about. I don't have any of the references you're talking about. I've probably seen some movies. We're going to talk about all kinds of movies. I did see Hobo with a Shotgun over the weekend. Well, there you go. You know, I mean, just because you're a, you know, a dyed-in-the-wool cultural oaf does not mean that you haven't (laughs) seen anything. Hmm. After all, we've we've actually made you see some things. You, You saw Shanghai Express because of us. That's true. You saw Sunrises because of us. I also saw um, the Dracula, Andy Warhol's Dracula. I can't remember what the original name of it was. Blood for Dracula. Blood for Dracula. Does that mean you're coming this week to see Flesh for Frankenstein? I really want to. Uh, I really like. I, I watched some of the uh, some of the little clips from it on YouTube today. It looks pretty good. Now it's it won't unfortunately be in 3D, but hmm. 
So what are we going to talk about? The old format was basically that we would talk about the newer movies that came out, and right. I think we've all just decided that's a gigantic waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we would we probably can read our that. reviews. I mean, you know, I'll, I'll be more than glad to spend several minutes talking about how uh, The Cabin in the Woods does not reinvent the horror film. I'm tired of this whole thing that... What? Who came up with this idea? I don't idea? want to talk about it because I haven't no, seen but it. No, but the thing is, it, the, I, no, it's the idea. I don't have anything to do with the movie. It doesn't have to do with the movie as such. But where did this idea come from that genres are constantly in need of being reinvented? Well, you know, I was thinking about that because and I was reading your, your piece on it and then I was reading spoilers on it because I don't actually want to see it because my tolerance for Joss Whedon is at best, like... Well, Joss Whedon... Yeah will come to your house and rough you up if you spoil the movie for anyone. Which right there, if any movie... <laughs> I'm of the school... No, this is... You gave an interview. I'd like to see him try it. Okay, but, 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 here's, but here's, here's what I do. Here's what I do. Okay. Before we go on, on that tangent, though, right. I would also insult Uvi Bowl, and then I'd be like, we're going to have a fight, me and you, me and you, Uvi, and then... I would get into. A, I would book the same fight with Joss Whedon, and then I just wouldn't show up. And the two of them, because they're both wildly both culturally ignorant, you were, yeah. they would fight each other, and the world would be a much better place. That's and true, I, especially if they ate each other up. I even liked Firefly. It was okay, but oh well, that's not here either. What was I going to say? I, you were talking about Joss Whedon coming to your house and right. rubbing you up. I'm of the opinion that if you can have Some people like that kind a of movie thing. spoiled for you, it's not worth the trouble to begin with. Well, and it just sounds like I mean. It, Having not seen the film, but having read some of the spoilers about it, it sounds like it's not doing anything that Scream didn't do, essentially. Oh, I mean, it's not it doing it, anything that I wasn't able to figure out pretty early on. Right? I mean, is it, I guess the setup is a little bit different, but it's not... It just sounds like it's making fun well, of... Well, I mean, the whole thing, the whole idea that, that, that there's something, you know, new about postmodern horror that makes fun of the, of the genre... Um, has anybody ever seen Bride of Frankenstein? That's rather old, you know? And that's uh, probably the earliest example of it. Yeah, just the more I think about it, it seems like if there's any genre you could point to that's constantly reinventing itself, it seems like it's it's got to be horror because it's. I mean, there's. It, well, I mean, everything gets updated one way or another. Whether or not it's actually reinvented is another story. I mean, there's uh, to me, there's nothing I saw in this movie other than a bunch of Whedonisms that essentially is any different from oh Friday the 13th part 6 Jason Lives which is postmodern and self-referential and acts like it knows that you're watching a horror movie so I mean what's the big deal it's the first time Joss Whedon's done it well with the exception of Buffy the Vampire Slayer didn't he write that are you a Joss Whedon fan Steve no not even remote. I mean there are a few things he's it's done that I like okay just that Joss Whedon will come to your house, but... I'd be more frightened than a man named Joss is anywhere around me. That but, would be what worries me. But he didn't direct this, right? Was he no, he just wrote, wrote it and produced it. Okay. But... He did write and direct the Avengers movie. Which but, I'm, I'm a little worried about. I mean, I'm sure it'll be pretty, but, like, I just... I'm afraid it's going to suffer from those same problems. Which why just do like you it, think it'll be pretty? It's not like this guy is some sort of great visual stylist. Because yeah. this guy's in tight clothes and... Well, yeah, I understand spandex that. I mean, and, he, and, and they have a lot of money to throw at this thing. So they Steve, truckloads Steve of figures it. they can get really good guys in tights. Well, I know that movie won't. I think they can get really good computers. <laughs> to make them look really exactly. good. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't yeah. think this will happen. I can't imagine how hilarious it would be if that movie bombed. It's not going to happen, but it after all hysterical. the effort. It would be it would. It they basically be. made three Iron Man 2... Um, Captain America, like, they keep making these movies that are setting up the Avengers. Well, Thor. Thor, yeah. Yeah, it's just a bunch of movies to, for one other movie, like, that nobody knows if it's going to be any good. Did they make a, a Nick Fury movie? Did they? Did they? Well, no. I mean, he, he just, he just shows right? up in the last scene. Oh, yeah, but then he can get his own movie, which I think is unfortunate. Eh. I guess this is, we'll see how this one does, I guess. Well, yeah, but, you know, it's... It won't be as good as I can guarantee you. I, I say it now, sight unseen, this movie will not be as good as The Spirit. Well. But that brings us to something that uh, you mentioned wanting to talk about, which was the idea of remakes, going from the, right. hor the horror reinvention and sort of this, you know... Well, it, uh, a couple weeks ago they have the trailer for the new Total Recall debuted, 
Which I don't know. If I like the original was some sort of fucking holy grail. Well, that's the thing. Like, in the everybody was up in arms over this movie. It looks. I'm of the same opinion. I, I enjoyed the first, the original Total Recall. It's not. I don't hold it any great esteem. Um, but this remake looks perfectly fine. You can't tell. But the thing is, is like it's being completely. It won't have Arnold in it. That's bound to be a plus. I know. Actually, that's one of the things that I feel like that fixes because I never, from the original Total Recall, my biggest problem with it was that even though it's a big, unbelievable movie, I don't buy that you're going to send a giant Austrian anywhere to be covert. Like, he's not, you, that's not going to work. And so I feel like that you fixes You think he it. draws attention? Yes. Well, I, I wouldn't trust the I giant Austrian on Mars. You know. And so nobody's seen this movie, this new one, but from but a, minute, a minute worth of trailer, yes. They hate it. Where you can't really tell what it does with the movie. Maybe it reinvents it. We don't know. <laughs> Well, and it's also, it's, I mean, the story that it's based on is, is a it's nothing, thin yeah. slip of what, I mean. This, the, this looks a lot like the original, but with, it's updated. Like, the production design is a little better, and, or a lot better, all that stuff. Um, the, the original has a very bizarre technology. Like, they're using giant TVs to communicate with each other. And well, the, the whole thing about it is, though, it's, it's like the... You know, the this remake is, right. is not new. Right. The idea is not new. It is not even, it doesn't reinvent Hollywood. It is Hollywood. The remake has always been around. Right, there's and, this idea that this is well, like the death knell of movies. Is no, it's not the death knell of movies. It's, it's, it's always existed. But we're at the advantage now that at least the studios aren't suppressing. Well, the we're at, that, that's one thing. But another thing is, is that they did this in an era when movies showed and then they went away and so five six years later they had no reason to believe that anybody was going to try to compare their crappy new version with the crappy old version and critics were no better I mean uh, say what you will about modern film criticism and it's pretty sucky especially since everybody with a computer can be one but old critics were frequently pretty pathetic and in fact one of my favorite ones is the the fact that they bamboozled the critics in 1935 Todd Browning remade the lost film London After Midnight which was not lost at the time which he'd made in 1927 as a talkie it apparently is almost identical and the critics loved it because it was such a fresh take on the horror genre because it turned out not to have a supernatural element which is just a hangover from the fact that in 1927 when he made the original there was no such thing as a horror movie with a supernatural element they all had some kind of bullshit rational explanation which made less sense than believing in vampires this is no different and it obviously wasn't fresh in 1935 but they'd all forgotten about it so that brings me to an, another related topic, which we started talking about a little bit before we started recording here, which is the, I don't know if you call it a remake or just sort of a reinvention. That didn't tell me they really reinvented it, but the Three Stooges, the uh, Farrelly brothers coming back with a new Three Stooges. That's a simulacrum. Now, I've heard, I've heard from one person who heard from a friend that they didn't hate this Three Stooges movie. I've seen your review, and you obviously disagree but they seem to think that, for what it is, it's a pretty loving tribute. Oh, to... I am. It's, it's well intended. Okay. It's still shit. Okay. But it is well intended. Well, and one of the things that I was very surprised by in reading your review was that you don't actively hate the Three Stooges. Uh, you, well, to, you think you're not a fan. No, but, I'm not a fan. But I, I'm used to people who are proper film critics just dismissing the Three Stooges completely out of hand, especially by comparison to someone like, say, the Marx Brothers. Well, they're, they're definitely, you know, compared to the Marx Brothers, they're, they're no. non-existent. Let I me mean, ask they, you a question. Yeah. If Farrelly Brothers made a Marx Brothers movie, would you be up, more upset? I they basically see made, it. Okay. But if you, from their track record, they wouldn't, though. 
is the thing. I guess, no, I think it's it? a little too that's a little too cerebral for them. I don't, I don't, I don't see the uh, the Farrelly's, you know, leaning right. in this direction somehow. I Who would make a Marx Brothers? Well, somebody actually kind of did. Did you never see Brain Donors? It's sort of a remake of Night at the Opera with John Turturro as okay. Groucho. It's Very good. not horrible until they get to the Swan Lake Ballet, which of course being a modern film, the idea that it would be really, really funny if ballet dancers had flatulence. Okay. okay. It's unfortunate. It is unfortunate, because otherwise it was kind of clever. Okay. But anyway. The, the, now having said that, I haven't seen this thing in 15, 20 years, so. It might not have it, I, I might feel differently about it if you brought it and showed it to me now. Probably not going to. I hope not. Well, so getting to the Three Stooges, though, one of the things that I was surprised about in, in reading this is that y you actually gave them some credit for having this sort of bizarre alternate reality that they live in and just some very surreal elements to, to their story, which is absolutely true. Well, look, I, I, you know, let's, let's, let's look at their second short film. The first one is just too weird and completely out there and has nothing to do with the rest of them. That, that's the one called Woman Haters, which has the rhyming dialogue and has really no relationship to uh, the Three Stooges as we know them. Do they poke each other's eyes? Uh, I think they may at some points, but mostly it's it's just an oddity. And they hated it themselves. But then they made Men in Black, which is the one they got the Oscar nomination for, for Best Short Film, which Best Short Film was a more viable category in 1934 than it is now. But it has things in it like... They, they all page Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, and Dr. Howard. And uh, they'll go into this room... And they'll come out riding a three-seater bicycle or go-karts or a horse. I mean, this is surreal. Billy Gilbert's a crazy patient who talks about giant green canaries coming out of the buttonholes of his nightgown. Uh, they shoot the uh, PA system. And, and then it keeps still calling for Dr. Howard, Dr. Fine, and Dr. Howard till they find the right tube and shoot it. And then it says, ah, oh, you got me. You know, this is, this is not anything related to known reality. This is what I talked about in the review where they, you know, try to sneak into a palace by all three of them dressing up as Santa Claus and arriving on a sleigh in the desert. This is, is not normal stuff. Uh, there's nothing like this in the film. The film is, is just puts them and has them hit each other a, a lot, other than the scene where they fight with peeing babies. Did you call that inspired? No. Okay. No. I haven't seen that many golden showers since I saw a taxi zoom clove. But, uh... So... Can you think of, a, of both a really, really good modern remake and also just an absolutely needless, terrible remake? Well, that my opinion, <coughs> my feeling, and I feel like history backs this up for the most part, it's less the material you're remaking and who. Like, I can think of Cronenberg's The Fly. Well, that's better than the original, right. but the original was a crappy movie. Right, but if you took anybody else from that period and had them make that movie. That it probably made a crappy movie. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and I, I'm, I'm in the minority, but I think that the Coen Brothers, Lady Killers, it's just fine. But it's the Coen Brothers. Yeah. Right. So. But they have made a movie where I've liked Tom Hanks. If you're a bad director and you make bad movies, you're going to make a bad remake. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I like Jonathan Demme's The Truth About Charlie which is a remake of Charade, which horrifyingly to me, a great many people reviewing that movie never figured out that it was a remake of anything. Which I thought was... That told me a lot about the reviewers. But on the whole, I think the, the consensus seems to be that it's just if you're a shitty filmmaker, you're going to make shitty movies regardless of what Pretty you're... Pretty much, yeah. Playing. That should be... And going back to, to Total Recall... <laughs> Len Wiseman's <coughs> underworld movies I could care less about, but um, I enjoyed his Die Hard movie the one time I saw it. 
It was fun. It was his Die Hard movie. Well, the fourth one. Live Free or Die Hard. That was made by the guy who made those Underworld movies? Yeah. Wow. Mr. Kate Beckinsale? Yeah, Mr. Kate Beckinsale. So, I mean... Who did he steal her from? Did he steal her? Yeah. Who? Um, you? Michael Sheen? No. I think. No. That's who she was married to at the time. Get those Underworld movies, I guess, too. Yeah, that leather got him all bothered. Yeah. So, what other movies coming up are ones that are, you're particularly excited about? Are you excited about anything? Um, no. I'm interested know. in Dark Shadows. I'm not excited about it, but I'm interested. Now, that is a very interesting case, because, of course, it's an adaptation... Of a really crappy TV show. It's No, it's terrible. I watched Dark Shadows when I was growing up, because had, they had it on PBS, oh, the original. It's got its... It's fans, right? Yeah. Everything oh, has oh, yeah. its fans. Well, That's not a. But I mean, I haven't seen it, so I don't have an opinion. Oh God, so it's awful! Saying. It is so bad. We used to come home. Now I'm the right age to have seen this when it was new and thought it was good. Right. We used to come home. We would come home and talk to each other on the phone while watching it, and we were like old women watching soap operas because the whole thrill of it was not that it was any good. It was whether somebody's wig was going to fall off or a prop wasn't going to work or a set was going to fall off. Well, well, in that case, it's something that people, or at least a certain segment of the population, remember fondly. Now, I know one one person, and she's probably going to listen to this podcast, who is stubbornly defensive right. of Dark Shadows, the television series, but that's because she wanted to bear Jonathan Fritz babies. Something that completely mystifies me. So, so, but the interesting thing about this to me is that it's Johnny Depp. And Tim Burton. Tim Burton is more interesting to me than Johnny Depp, but... Uh, I, I know so many people who have no idea it has anything to do with Tim Burton, and they're just like, I would like two tickets to Johnny Depp, please. Well, I know. I don't care. I'm not one of those people. So what do you think about it? I mean, I know people who will say things like, wow, I want to go see Cabinet in the Woods because Richard Jenkins is in it, but they're weird. And you know who you are. <laughs> so Jeremy... That's one of them, yeah. Okay. So what else is coming out? That, that, go ahead. You have more to say uh, about Dark Shadows. Um, I'm sure there'll be backlash against it because people remember it as being good. Dark but, Shadows? Yeah. I don't know that anybody really remembers it as being good, but they remember it as, from their childhood, childhood, childhood. And they think that it therefore has some sort of merit. Well, you know, that's kind of like Transformers. One of those things where if you watch Transformers, the TV show, it's okay, I guess, for what it is. But then, you know... You see, I, I never realized that when, when I first saw the... had the misfortune of seeing the first Transformers movie. Right. I had no idea that it was anything but a toy. I hadn't known that they had made a TV series out of it. You didn't know that <coughs> Orson Welles' last movie... Was the Transformers film? No, I just remember all those jokes about him playing the title role in the late great planet Earth. William Finley passed away that yesterday. That is definitely noteworthy. And, and if we had a, an understanding of the copyright laws, we could play a song from Phantom of the Paradise, but we don't, so we can't. So for those who don't know, I only know because of the review that you mentioned, uh, because not that long ago... Well, I'm just hoping we didn't hoodoo the guy. Because right. on Friday the 13th, we showed De Palma's The Fury, and he has a small role in it. On Saturday the 14th, he dropped dead. So maybe that was it. Maybe, maybe he just needed that last little gasp of maybe, fame. Maybe. He's just waiting it. for us to... He just was waiting for us to show one more William Finley movie. It may be the only time it's seen in public in years. Very likely, and it could well be the last. So tell me about William Finley. What kind of roles did he do? Well, I guess he's best known as... Winslow. Yes, Winslow Phantom Leech. of the Paradise, yeah. Also known as the Phantom. And yes. The Phantom of the Paradise. I mean, Paradise. that's really the only thing he's known for. He was a friend of De Palma's from college. And he'd been in some of his student films, and I think he's in Sisters. And he might be in Get to Know Your Rabbit or Hi, Mom, or one of those early movies. And then... And the last film he was in was De Palma's Black Dahlia, yes. if I remember yes. correctly. Yes, so he plays the creepy guy who gets pushed off the balcony right. and lands on his head on that pointy thing. Yes. This is a pretty uh, and then a good movie. last it's not scene, a good movie by any stretch of the imagination, but it's one of those movies that's, that's 
bad in such a way that, boy, is it entertaining. Unless, of course, you're some sort of true crime nut and then you're all upset because it isn't realistic. I feel like it's, it has a zoot suit riot, which actually happened. I know, but so. it just sounds wonderful. It's but I mean, that, that, the, I mean, the whole it's... thing about... I, I love this whole idea that these, these three lunkheads are going... Even if there is one, which I'm finding it really hard to imagine a theater showing a 1928 silent movie in the period this movie set. Even harder to believe that our three leads go to see the man who laughs, and then they completely create a fabricated backstory about where the man who laughs was shot to explain the whole Black Dahlia murders. It is just weird and I thought it was terrific because of that and so that's that, that's William Finley's legacy huh he was yeah, in some weird much. movies that his friend did yeah pretty much but I mean you know a lot of us a lot of us will never do anything nearly as memorable I as mean, playing Winslow Leach quite frankly Bruce Campbell is not much better off than that except that I like uh, William Finley better than Bruce Campbell William Finley's been in good movies, I That's think, true. is the, the distinction we're going to make here. There is a distinction. Well, Bruce Campbell has had small roles in good movies. I believe he's been in some Coen Brothers movies in minor capacities. It's less minor. of a joke at this point, but we can save that for next week. We'll, have a, we'll do a whole episode on why we don't give a shit about Bruce Campbell. We could probably good. get Bruce Campbell to show up for that show. I mean, if we uh, uh, check your pocket to see if you have any change, because we might be able to afford him well, for I've a got day. A little bit of change, I know. I think I've got maybe. I might have a buck and a quarter in quarters. You know, is that enough to get Bruce Campbell? It might be. I'll have to call his agent, aka eBay. <laughs> I, I, well, I've got some. I got some, I've got some food. <laughs> hey, I've got some food coupons. We can feed him. Okay. That, that chin, you know, it's, it takes a massive nutrition drain. I'm sure. The amount of calories just to hold his head up straight. It's be astonishing. Yeah. Astonishing. Okay, so I, I guess we're done. Yeah. I guess we are. So next week, it's Bruce Campbell's champ. And maybe Hump the Wonder Camel. Together. As one. Which is which? That's the, that's the question. You just show up until Well, let's red. see. We can, well, I think <laughs> what we can do is that we, we should have a vote as to would you rather see Bruce Campbell's chin or Hump the Wonder Camel. Is it, but people are going to think that you mean hump as a verb. Well, if, if that if that <laughs> would you rather you see Bruce Campbell's <laughs> chin, or would you rather hump the Wonder Campbell? And that, in that's, either case, I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, if people want to take it as a verb and they want to hump the Wonder Camel, that's not my problem. That's you know, that's between them and the camel. If anything catches on, I hope it's the euphemism humping the wonder camel if we can have ever have a legacy which it's humping the wonder camel having invented that maybe, phrase maybe we can do better Probably. we've got time <laughs>